20 years ago tomorrow, we were attacked, not New York City, all of us. Yeah, and some of us will take this week to remember. Others carry it with them every day. Denver 7's Bion Wang reports tonight from Broomfield. Of course, emotions are not as raw. Time is the best healer for anything that happens. Yet time may never fully heal the wounds, both physical and emotional, for those personally impacted by the events of 9-11. Oh, I knew everybody on that flight. So that was really hard. Sharon Robinson was a flight attendant for United Airlines in Newark at the time. She worked side by side with those who perished when United Flight 93 crashed into a Pennsylvania field. Shock, uh, horror, all of those things, intense sadness. That stuck with her for a while, and on each anniversary, she reflects on that day at the 9-11 Memorial at Community Park in Broomfield, where the names of her colleagues and all those who died that day are set in bronze. We never forget. These stones can only hold so many memories. It's why Sarah Ferris with the North Metro Fire Rescue District is creating an online living memorial, a place where the survivors of the terror attacks can pass down their memories and emotion of that day before they're forgotten. People can come and read those stories, see the photos, and really um, you know, reflect on those personal experiences that were tied to this tragic event. For the first time, the 9-11 Memorial in Broomfield will also have a tribute wall. People can come by throughout the weekend, leave a note, maybe um, tie on a, a flower, a memento. Those items will then be digitized and archived on the online memorial, and it's experiences like Robinson's that will live there forever. I think September 11th was a really a, a day of reckoning, of maturity for, for the United States. We'd never had anything like that happen in the U.S. before. Hopefully we won't again. Whether cast in bronze, set in stone, or posted online, there are those doing their parts to make sure this memory doesn't fade. Bayan Wang, Denver 7. Of the 13 service members killed in Afghanistan last month, only one of them, 31-year-old Marine Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover, would have been old enough to remember 9-11. Eventually, even the people teaching the history classes will have learned about it secondhand. It is our great regret that we know about the Coloradans who died that day, not through meeting them, but from the stories we tell. We never spoke with Jason Dahl, but we talk about him every September. Dahl was a pilot from Littleton. He was in the cockpit of United Flight 93 that day, having switched shifts with a co-worker so he could celebrate his upcoming wedding anniversary. Catherine Labori was the head flight attendant on United Flight 175, the plane that crashed into Tower 2. She was born and raised in Colorado Springs. And today, her alma mater, Mitchell High School, honored her with a ceremony. Catherine's parents were there. Her mom told KKTV that she thinks of her little girl when she wakes in the morning and before she falls asleep at night. Maclovio Joe Lopez Jr. had family in Pueblo and was aboard the same flight as Catherine. A newspaper article written 20 years ago quotes his daughter, then 21, trying to wrap her head around the news that her dad would not be walking her down the aisle. Alok Mehta went to CSU and was interning at the World Trade Center. It was only his third day on the job. Last spring, the scholarship named in his honor went to a veteran and first-generation college student. Kit Farragher worked for a Denver investment firm and was attending a training session inside one of the towers. A scholarship is named for her as well. In 2019, it sent five young men and women to college. Chris Fonin was from Lafayette and met his wife at CU Boulder. They moved to New York where they raised three children and Chris worked as a trader in the North Tower. We think we would have gotten along well with Nina Bell, a CU grad starting a new job in New York City. Her obituary mentions a bumper sticker that read, mean people suck. On September 10th, 2001, she emailed a friend saying, I am so very happy. Though we didn't know you, your stories live in so many of us. We could never forget them.